you're doing little tight work like this, use the heel of the cleaver to be the first point of contact with the bone. You always want to aim with the heel. Because it's a heavy cleaver, I can just drop it. I don't have to power it down and I won't miss. My favorite thing to do is to leave the rib just like this. I might French it a little bit on the tips just for prettiness. Work this membrane by starting a seam along each rib by scoring it and then get your finger behind it and pull up. It's just for prettiness. This is just to tie up flaps. And so I'll definitely put it in there. So Tony, you are finding the coordination of all the parts of your two pigs a bit overwhelming. It is, there's lots of parts. Making sure nothing spoils and gets cooked, eaten in the right time frame. That's just what we were talking about, right? That's the game, that's the fun. You're like creating the story, this epic journey through the body of a pig. Does anyone have a written game plan for first timers? Um, I can't remember if I've written this down, but the reason you feel that pressure is probably partly, well, like that pressure can be enhanced if you are going to try to like not freeze anything. That's a big one. See, that's the big siren song of the freezer, which is okay, I get it. But that's the thing that it offers. It's like you can, it simplifies the process because you can just get it in the freezer and then you have an indefinite pause before you need to deal with it again, right? So that's the advantage of the freezer. And I don't, I think that, you know, you should avail yourself of it when it serves the greater good. You know, if you're going to bite off more than you can chew and you're trying to make, you know, oh gosh, what would you do? Blood sausage and pate and try the liver fried nicely in butter and make slaughter day fry and maybe make some head cheese and cure all the bacon and fry up the spleens. Um, that's a lot to take on. And maybe you could do most of that if you broke down and just froze some of the meat. Don't freeze it awful because that just kind of loses its magic. But that's, that's one thing that can help. Um, but if you are going to eschew the freezer, the closest thing, I think I, I might have more of this. I would check out the pig slaughter butcher's salt chapter in the uh, resources section of the membership. And I think I might list a general schedule there. Another schedule that people use is from the River Cottage Meat Book, which I recommend for a bunch of other reasons as well. It's beautiful, it's well written. Um, he doesn't scare you with nitrite. Uh, um, draconian warnings and such. It's great. And he does have a little uh, slaughter schedule there uh, that you can use to make a rough outline of what to use when. The other one you could intuit from the On the Anatomy of Thrift videos that I made with Andrew Plotsky a while ago. Those sort of give you a hint of a schedule. So for me, if you have a place to chill the carcass, that's a big one. Not freeze, but just chill the whole carcass. That gives you several days just to deal with the offal. Uh, the carcasses can hang in a walk-in for a week. They'll be fine. Um, beyond that, they might start to get a little slimy around the trotters, which is a sign of exterior spoilage bacteria. But that gives you time to do a bunch of offal you know, to even clean intestines, which is something you'd want to do on the day of slaughter, if you wanted. That's pretty, you know, if, I always say, if you manage to eat the head and the whole liver, in addition to, you know, the rest of the carcass, the bones, fat, skin, that is an achievement. That is way beyond uh, the standard yield of a pig today, way beyond. The standard yield today is skinned, right? which means not only is it lacking skin, but it's lacking much, much fat, very much fat. And it's very sad. And no head, no trotters, no tail. Um, so that's the standard deal and certainly no guts. So, oh yeah, so to Anatomy of Thrift, I have one video called Slaughter Day, I believe. And the reason it's called that is because we cover the most perishable things first. So, um, I guess, you know, sort of assuming they happen on slaughter day, but they don't have to happen on slaughter day. It can happen the next day. 
So you do your pig killing. You've got two pigs. Okay, yeah. So kill one day, get them in the chiller, go to bed. And then uh, maybe have the skirts and the hangers for dinner. And maybe some fresh slices of liver and heart. So good. Some mustard, some salt. Um, and just a little bit of wine. Drink like a quart of water before you drink an ounce of wine because you'll have worked hard all day and you'll probably be de dehydrated. And you don't want a hangover for the next day when you're going to, this is me speaking from experience, uh, make your blood sausage, your head cheese, and your pate. So those are three things that I like to use quickly because head, blood, and liver are perishable and they don't freeze well. I guess the head could freeze well, technically, but it is highly perishable if you're not going to freeze it um, because of the bacteria in the mouth, you know, so that's the day you would want to start your head cheese. If you're going to make your head cheese, um, take the jowls off, cure those for guanciale. So that's just putting them on the salt in the fridge. And what remains of the head, you can take the ears off and cook those separately or just plop the whole head in a pot with carrots, onions, and celery and start the simmer. Start that first because you're going to want that to be simmering while you're making the blood sausage.